Well, we're done. We've made our way through the highs and lows of the Tony Hawk franchise from start to finish these past few years. But the week of Hawktober for me has never really felt complete. The original four Pro Skater games have been incredibly misrepresented in this channel special since I'd already covered them before Hawktober was born. So coming off of the wretched tumour of this series that burned its once proud name one final time, today's video is all about going back to where it all started, to uncover some forgotten Pro Skater games. Forgotten because I forgot to cover them at the time. Yup! Hey! Let me just say, out of the gate, it feels good to be home again. Having seen the original Tony Hawk skateboarding butchered through Pro Skater HD, the feeling of satisfaction rolling through these iconic levels is the best I've felt all week. The original game, while stiff by today's standards, still controls really well in my opinion and whether you're playing it on PS1, Dreamcast or the Nintendo 64 is a moot point. It's just as fun to this day across all three, even with the N64 controller. The game favours the D-pad and C buttons for control, mimicking PlayStation's design, which was a great decision in the end and made this version of the game a lot more bearable than I would have originally thought. It's a shame this version misses out on a lot of the full motion video, which was half the appeal at the time, but at least the game is still fun. When Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 rolled around the following year, already in its early days, this series kicked into overdrive, appearing across multiple platforms of the time. This game was a peak for the industry, not just for sports games, but video games in general, and especially the actual sport of skateboarding. This is surely responsible for many people picking up a board of their own, so the Tony Hawk series was already starting to have a huge cultural effect. Each of the different versions featured some slight changes, the most notable one in my opinion being an additional level in the N64 title. Remember the demo for Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX? Yeah, how could you not? Well, that level was actually playable in the Nintendo game. An interesting inclusion, one that doesn't really affect the game a whole lot, and in all honesty, the level is pretty basic, even by the standards of the time. But, you know, I still think it's interesting. Now, when the next generation of game consoles came about, of course we got Pro Skater 3, a game that is still one of the highest rated and best selling games of all time, available in late 2001. But it didn't just land onto the 6th generation systems, no, it was also available on the PlayStation 1 and eventually released on the N64 almost an entire year later towards the end of 2002, which makes it the final game released for the console in North America. That's pretty mental. Although we do see this all the time whenever a new generation of systems comes along. A lot of mass-produced franchises, like those from Activision, do linger across both old and new options for various reasons, but mostly to cash in on those not ready to upgrade. I did mention the inferior version of the game in my original Pro Skater 3 episode, but I'm actually curious to see how this compares now that I finally own a copy. Helping out Neversoft, Shaba Games worked on porting this over to the older systems. These guys would go on to do the same for various other Tony Hawk games, such as the 6th gen ports of Project 8. Bastards. It's not all bad though. Getting to the title screen looks and sounds like the Pro Skater 3 I know, just running on the retro engine of the second game. 
Things like Creator Skater and Creator Park are identical to what we had in the previous title, but I honestly can't complain given the desperate attempts at these modes we've seen the rest of this week. For a port, it's fine. Getting into the game and starting to play through career mode, it feels admittedly really strange experiencing the foundry at a lower quality. I'm surprised at how close it is to the actual thing though. Objectives are a bit different all around for this game, due obviously to the limitations. We don't get to dunk the foreman, stop the car chase, or help the skinny man, but alternatively, we've got a few more basic goals, normally centred around hitting certain objects to trigger changes to the maps, so there is still quite a solid emphasis on Levolution that was introduced with this game. Levels themselves are much the same, with the biggest difference being that Canada and Los Angeles have swapped position. It's pretty weird getting to this level so early on, seeing the earthquake already triggered, but having a new high wire grind to complete and everything else being intact. Each level has some changes with larger chunks cut out and newer, smaller spots added in to compensate. The only level with any major differences is, again, Canada. While the skate park area is identical, the woodland area is totally different. We've got more train tracks to grind, dynamite blowing up trees, and a heap of buildings to combo across, where the original version just had nothing. A dead zone. It has that memory altering effect I've gone on about in the past, but I've got to admit, this is a solid compromise for such a beloved game. The one level I think suffers though, is the airport. Structurally, not much has changed, but this version of Thups 3 features one major design flaw. The fucking big drop mode is back. You're kidding me! And here I was thinking Robomoto's HD remake was a display of inept game design. It's the same case here as the Pro Skater 3 levels that featured in that game. They're totally balked because of it. Constantly, I find myself falling off my board because these levels were not designed with this mechanic in mind. It was removed after the second game, and as a result of it being here, the flow is killed in certain areas. This is why the airport suffers because missing your mark on these high grind lines equals death down below. Hell, there is even a new goal where we need to grind this plane, but good luck getting down off the damn thing without bailing. It's such a shame. While a lot of the unlockable levels such as the cruise ship were omitted from this version of the game, in its place we got an original level known as Downhill. It's as it sounds, just a big run down a street in Rio. There isn't much to do in the middle, and to either side is a single continuous combo line, but again, good luck with that big drop coming into play. When you reach the bottom, there is a small skate park to play about in, but that's really it. This is what Tony Hawk originally wanted these games to be, a series of downhill courses with a skate park at the bottom. So it's interesting when levels like this survive through development and make it into the games. This level was featured again in the lower quality versions of Project 8, seeing the skate park replaced with a rundown shack surrounded by water. Not the best level and not really worth beating the game for, but I can't let that take away from everything else, as this game is still highly enjoyable even with the drop in quality. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 5th Generation Port gets 6 out of 10. Now, I mentioned the delayed release of Pro Skater 3 over the course of an entire year. Well, the original Xbox version was scheduled to be a launch title for that system, but wouldn't be ready in time and didn't surface until many months later. I guess as a sorry for the delay bonus, this version of the game features a unique level and unlockable character. X-Ray the Skeleton is a bit of fun to mess about with, and the new level is the Oil Rig. Later featured in American Wasteland, it's still as awkward to navigate as ever, so... Why even bother covering this? 
because if you own an original Xbox to play this and happen to live in the US, then you have access to a Tony Hawk game the rest of us never had the chance to play. While PS2 players were over the moon with this timeless gem, the Xbox needed a Tony Hawk game for its launch, as Pro Skater 3 wouldn't be ready in time. So Treyarch were tasked to develop a fully-fledged remaster of Pro Skater 1 and 2, known as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. Or Thoops Tooks for short. This game launched with the original Xbox, exclusive to North America. You fuckers, please know that I'll forever hate all of you for that decision. But enough about that, let's pop this bad boy into this little puppy and see what it has to offer. So, like I said, it's technically a full remaster of the original two games, but the sequel takes centre stage. The creation suite from Thups 2 is also here, just as you know it, with updated graphics. Apparently the colour green was too hard to remaster though, so Squares looks a bit shit. This is an Xbox exclusive, how on earth did they leave out green? The first career we get access to, again, is the sequel. It's just how you know it, honestly, to the point where I don't have much to report. The control is stiffer than I was expecting for the time, but that's actually true to the originals, so I can't complain. This is mostly a graphics upgrade, and I honestly think it looks good. Treyarch did a wonderful job upscaling textures and making models and environments look a lot better. Completing the Pro Skater 2 career unlocks the 2X career, which is where things start to get interesting. This game features five brand new levels, the first of which is the club. And it's honestly one of the most garbage Tony Hawk levels in existence. Seriously, it consists of two rooms. One has a bowl with some high grinds, and the other has a multi-tiered dance floor, and not much else. There is also this crap techno music playing. Where is Power Man 5000, you cowards? Next level is the construction site, and again, it's not much. These levels come with goals, but only five for each, which is weak. It might have been the standard in 99, but not anymore. The problem with this level is that it features a giant vertical structure in the middle, and not much else. Getting to the top is about the only thing to do, unfortunately. From here, we move on to Tampa, which may look familiar as it's the contest level from Underground where we compete against Eric Sparrow. This level is a lot better and the vert area outside features a loop of death. Winning this unlocks the Pro Skater 1 career. I find it kind of backwards how that works. Why not start with the first game, second game, then unlock the 2X career? Oh, by the way, the 2X career is over now. Yep, two shitting levels and a competition, and it's over. Nice one, guys. So we go and play through the original game with, you guessed it, big drop physics. Fuck's sake. This is making me feel bad for shitting on Pro Skater HD so much, given that they got it wrong way back here. Still, it doesn't hinder you as much because we've got all the moves of Pro Skater 2, and I can safely say, this is the most carefree, simple, almost boring run of the original game I've ever had in my life. It's so easy, I didn't even have to try. Completing this unlocks the subway, which is a bit boring, especially without any goals. And if you complete all of the goals across the other 2x levels, you unlock the Skylines level. This level is so shit. Summed up, it's far too cramped with objects placed all over, leaving you no room to actually build up to tricks, and all the lines are a fucking mess. Jesus, this was not worth the effort I went to getting ready to play this. 
I hate to be so sour about it because it is good. In fact, it's a really good upscale of Pro Skater 2 and a decent graphical effort at the original game. But the exclusive content here is not worth it in the slightest and actually hurts the game overall, given the weird progression for unlockables. Not to mention, big drop mode breaking some of the better levels. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X gets 5 out of 10. Maybe it's worth a go if you're a fan of the series, but I can guarantee this won't make you a fan of the series. Then eventually, a year later, Pro Skater 3 would make it to the Xbox, but only a few months before Pro Skater 4 would become available. Poor marketing in my opinion, why would you get last year's game right before the new one was coming out? But I've got a better question. Would you rather try your hand at the still really awesome PS2 and Xbox versions of Pro Skater 4, or would you rather give the PS1 version a go? For some fuck all reason. This port was handled by Vicarious Visions, who were also responsible for the entire series, making it onto portables. But more on that next year. This game is, as you'd expect, just Pro Skater 2 with a Pro Skater 4 makeover. Timed sessions? Cut. Big drop mechanic? Cut. But unfortunately, due to being on the PS1, the overflowing personality of the superior version is also... Cut. While the third game managed to retain some of the personality and key traits its new gen counterpart was known for, Pro Skater 4 doesn't have anything. All missions are triggered from these tokens, we get a straightforward explanation of the objective so we can complete it and move on. I am happy to report that the college map survived a light trimming down, it still feels like the college I remember, with a few less obstacles. Once we earn enough goal points, we can advance to the next area. What this game does differently is split the paths, allowing you to choose the order you play and by association, the difficulty of missions in levels. Surprisingly, none of the levels have any drastic changes like we saw back with Canada. It's mostly just some palette swaps with a few smaller areas added in to make up for stuff that was removed. Speaking of which, the final zoo level is nowhere to be seen here. Good. That level is pretty shit to be honest. In its place is a new level, the sewers. It's three simple rooms connected with corridors and each of these rooms offer some interesting terrain. I can't emphasize it enough, this is a damn solid level. I was never the biggest fan of the maps in Thups 4, they serve the objectives more than the objectives serve the level design, but this is really fun. There are a lot of high wire lines for the more advanced players to perfect but even staying closer to the ground, there are many opportunities for big airs and long combos. I'm prepared to say, this might be one of my favourite Tony Hawk levels. It's really fun. But unfortunately, that's where my praise ends for this game. Like I said, there is none of that Pro Skater 4 flair, as you might expect due to system limitations. But man, does this game suffer because of it. I have one complaint for this game, and let me tell you, it's a deal breaker. All of the missions for each location are exactly the same. There is 28 for each, and I shit you not, 17 of those are either high score or high combo objectives. That is insane! But of those 11 unique goals, they only really revolve around collecting a few items, doing a particular trick over a gap, or winning a competition. Things that happen on every level anyway. All you do in this game is get high scores, and I've done the math, I won't bore you with it, but roughly 70% of this entire game is just hitting the same combo lines for the same high scores. This is just ridiculous, how is there so little to do here? Limitations isn't even a viable excuse, because Pro Skater 3 still had interactive and individual goals for each level, why couldn't they have done that here? 
Pro Goals return, though they've been scaled way back as well. Most of them are just getting a high score. A million points! Have fun with that for the millionth time. And for the others, instead of doing a heap of tricks, Tony just does his impossible 900. Instead of a manual showcase, Rodney Mullen just does one manual, and instead of riding a shopping cart down Alcatraz, Bam just smashes some windows. It's pathetic. Also, why does BAM get listed under more skaters? That's so mean! It's just him and the little person, once you unlock him, out here on their own. Also, I don't know how this ranks on the offensiveness scale, but as a short man myself, I'm not big on it. Obviously, I imagine it'd be kind of hard for them to include shit like doing tricks across a giant gap in the loop, but if you can't do it, don't do it. Why does this game exist? Clearly, it doesn't live up anywhere near to the standards of the superior version, which to me is quite surprising, seeing how well Pro Skater 3 fared on old gen. This game even has more glitches, with a lot of vertical grinds happening about the place. But for completing everything, yes, literally everything, or saying fuck that like I did, and just using the instant complete cheat code to power through all of this filler crap that ruins this game, you can unlock the final level. Little Big World. You get shrunken down to the size of an ant, and you get to skate along the kitchen counter. Neat idea, but wow this level sucks. It's just got no flow, and considering the amount of work you theoretically have to put in to access it, it's far from worth it, making this game a complete and total waste. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 on PS1 gets 4 out of 10. This game is really fucking bad. It's not bad to play by any means, it's like playing Pro Skater 2, and a majority of the levels hold up really well, but beyond that, it's just a mess of mediocrity doing the same shit on loop, entirely void of any creativity. By this point in time, the Pro Skater formula was dying off in favour of story modes with the Underground games. A strong next step for the franchise, people still hold close to this day. So, I think it's only fitting I end this off with a quick look at Thug Pro. Since the series has been misused over the years, fans have stayed alive through this mod for Underground 2 on PC. I want you to keep in mind as you look and listen to what I have to say that everything here was made for fans, by fans, in this strong modding community, free of charge. The limitations of Creator Skater have been drastically overhauled, Creator Park is just mental in this, but I think most importantly, this gives you levels from every single game, all in one, easy to access package. Oh, and of course, it's got online multiplayer. Put simply, this is one of the craziest efforts from such a strong, passionate community I've ever seen. This has been a thing for a long time, but I'm only just now getting the chance to try it. It's got levels from all across the series, and even spin-off skateboarding titles, custom maps made by some of the best map builders I've ever seen, and a die-hard fanbase that still play it on the regular. I had no issues joining a match, immediately finding some newbies like myself, and some hardcore guys that can rip and roar through these stages like nothing else. It's hilarious! And as someone who missed the initial online multiplayer games of the early 2000s, this is magic for me. Finally getting the chance to play any form of a Tony Hawk game online, and test my skill base against other players, is a dream come true for me. 
I won't be scoring this unofficial addition to the franchise for that very reason, but these guys did a whopper job on this, and it's truly inspiring to see such a passionate gaming community. Congrats, guys. And once again, we've reached the end of Tony Hawk Tober. It's been an interesting week, let me tell you. And it wouldn't have been possible without the ongoing patience and support of all the people over on Patreon. Two years in a row now, you guys have contributed to this event that I pour my heart into, and it means so much to me that so many people want to see these larger scale specials on the channel. At this point, I've had enough Tony Hawk to last me a lifetime, but that won't stop me from coming back again next year to go back through the entire series one last time. Downsized, of course. But until then, I hope you enjoyed Hawktober 2018. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share the videos. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.